Hey, how's it going? My name is Jackie Fish and welcome back to another Total War Warhammer 2 online battle. Today we have a 3v3 custom map siege battle. The Skaven are going to be besieging the dwarfs as they try and defend the outside of this Karak. The custom map itself is pretty cool. It is only one wall, but again, I feel like the map creator has done a great job at kind of making an interesting one wall city. Again, which just makes me so disappointed about Warhammer 2 sieges. You can still make one wall sieges and still make them interesting like we have today and we're also using the glory mods we've been using a lot of steel faith overhaul mods recently and today you know we're going to try something a little bit different with the glory mods it's always nice to spice things up now and again i believe from my knowledge of these mods the glory mod kind of just goes for kind of more out there crazier units whereas steel faith tries to stay a bit more lore correct i think i don't know let me know in the comments down below if i'm right with what i'm saying there so yes, as I said, 3v3, we have the dwarfs on one side and the Skaven on the other side. The Skaven are also ready to approach the city straight away with these Vanguard deployed units, but let's just go ahead and take a look at a few units that people are bringing so we have a good idea. I won't go through every unit in this, I'll just go through a few of the kind of a notable ones so we know where everyone is spawning. So on the front lines, we do have some Warriors of Dragonfire Pass, guarding the walls as well, I should say. We do have some Miners with Blasting Charges. They're going to be extremely valuable, along with some Quarrelers, as well as Longbeards as well. And the Longbeards are going to be a sturdy wall defense. They're not going to let these Skaven take these walls without a fight, that is for sure. We continue to go back. We have some Artillery, along with the Iron Drake Halberdiers. These guys, or Halberdiers, these guys look really, really cool. I love just how much armor they have. Very nice unit. Then we have a Goblower back here. Continue to go back some of the uh, regiments of renowned rangers, more of the warriors, warriors of Dragonfire Pass, from some Thunderers, and just more elite units. In the center, we have a whole range of artillery. I love this artillery battery right here. It's just going to hammer away at the oncoming Skavens. We have some more Slayers to this left flank, along with probably one of the coolest looking units. Oh, it's actually the Peak Gate Guard. Oh, I like this kind of change to a Peak Gate Guard, giving them a red cape. It's kind of more royal than the blue one they're used to. They look pretty cool indeed. We also have some of the Iron Breakers as well. Well, well the unit, oh, this is the unit I was just about to talk about. Yeah, the Royal Guard right here. These guys look amazing. Love their shields. I love their red capes. I mean, capes make everything better. That is for sure. We also have a uh, Master Engineer here with a Flame Cannon team as well. Wait, is this just literally a... Yeah, this, this is an entire, this is just a master engineer unit. That's kind of cool. Because that's kind of what I was saying in a, in a different battle not so long ago. It'd be really cool to have these heroes kind of embedded in units. And almost have like, you know, an entire unit of like gobos with a unit of black orcs or something like that. It'd be really, really cool. Going over to the Skaven Forces, we have some uh, Plague Monk Sensor Bearers. These are like albino looking, looking nice. And a lot of artillery as well for the Skaven in this battle. So I imagine we'll see a lot of the walls actually being collapsed. We also have some of the Warp Fire Throwers and the, the Death Blow Bombardiers. Leading up the artillery as well. More Plague uh, Sensor Bearers right there. Or Plague uh, Cross... What are they even called? Plague Claw Catapult, sorry. My mistake. The, uh, the Skaven, I don't really play the Skaven too much, so a lot of their names I just don't know off by heart. Whereas a lot of the other units, are, I'm pretty good with the names now. Then on the front lines, we have the Storm Vermin Champions. What's leading up the artillery as well? Yeah, it's a Storm Vermin with Swords and Shields. So a lot of elite units in this army. We also have this really cool looking unit right here. Yeah, these guys look dope as hell. Really, really cool. Ratateers or whatever they're called. We also have some of the Shadow Clone. Oh, oh my god, they're huge. Look at them. They're going to be a deadly unit for sure. Continue to make our way over. Lots more artillery. Also a really cool battering ram as well for the Skaven. I think that's very cool. We have some Abominations, some Rat Ogres, uh, some more of them Ratateers. Uh, we also have the final Plague Month, Sensor Bearers, Storm Vermin, and Champions. And that's about it. So let's go ahead and get this battle started. I think the first little bit of engagement will be right here. So let's go ahead and watch this as the Dwarfs unload their Satchel Charges directly onto these units of Death Runners. Setting them ablaze, their Vanguard deployment, they snuck up here in the night, and now they are going to be suffering. However, they are managing to get their artillery up here um, pretty soon, hammering the defensive walls, um, along with the artillery fire right here. What is this? Oh, this is the unit of Quarters of Fireballs. That's pretty cool. I like that. That's pretty dope to see them shooting over. This is kind of almost like rocket artillery more than anything else. Skaven artillery is going to be coming down, and what are they going to be focusing? A part of a wall? Yeah, it does look like they're going to be trying to focus down a part of this wall with all of their artillery. More of the quarrelers coming out. They're actually hitting a few of their own units as well. As these assassins do manage to make their way over the walls. And coming in to hit these dwarves. Now these are just... What are these guys? These are just dwarven warriors. So we can't really expect too much from them. As 
especially because they are kind of thin. I guess the quarters, the fires are going to be trying to do as much damage as possible. Yeah, and here we go. The entire artillery coming off for the attackers right now. They've also got their, their uh, gate destruction team, I guess I'll call it, coming up here. What did the dwarves have to defend it? Not a lot. Just one brave unit of Iron Drakes and this unit of Warriors of Dragonfire Pass. I imagine we'll see this gate going down extremely quickly as the abominations and all of these rat ogres just pile in. You may need to get more over here. As well as that, we also have the first breach occurring. This is just going to allow the Skaven to flood into the city and the dwarves very much are sitting back and allowing them just to pour into the city itself. Which I don't think is going to be working out in their favor, if I'm honest. Because the Skaven are going to just be using their numbers to simply overwhelm the defenders. A lot of the fire arrows coming out and hitting these death runners. And the death runners, if they can get onto these corridors, that's going to be great. We do actually have, uh, oh, we actually have Mr. Bugman himself. Because we are using several mods. I should mention that as well. If you guys want to, uh, be, if you want to use any of the mods that we have been using in this battle, the link will be in the description down below. More artillery pouring into the battle as Bugman and his men just fire away. They want to get revenge for that, that burning of the brewery. The Rat Ogres are now pouring into the city. We do have a uh, Skyhammer, which is the Regiment of Renown, into the battle. But the after, oh my god, it's just such a cool battle. Battles like this are just so, so fun when it's just not just like so one dimensional. We have the ladders being pushed up to the wall. We have the walls being collapsed down. And now we have the Siege Towers making their way up to the wall itself. It just makes it feel so much cooler when there's like so many more things going on as these clones do go in. You also have Abomination up here. Joseph, get your men out of there. Retreat back, fall back, and allow the front line. Yeah, you can see all the dwarfs, they're just giving up the walls, which might be a good idea. Because nice. now we do see the fire cannons opening up on the Skaven coming out of these siege towers. They're going to be trying to find some good targets, maybe hitting a lot of these units of Ratateers. That's just such a cool name. At the moment, where we do have a strong Dwarven defense on this left part of the wall. The entire, everywhere else of the wall has just been lost. Whereas we do have some brave Longbeards right here who are looking to get their hands bloody. You know, I take that back. They are actually retreating from the engagement. Well, at least a few of them are. They've kind of left a small vanguard of these Longbeards back as the rest of the Stormburn champion pour off of the Siege Towers himself. That's going to be a hard fight for sure. The artillery and the fire arrows are coming in now. And as I was saying, like, it's maybe a good idea that they've given up these walls. Because now all of this artillery back here can just have a perfect view. Even though we are starting to see these, uh, these doom wheels actually making their way deep into the lines of the dwarfs. And doing a lot of damage to this royal guard. This probably isn't a great engagement for the Royal Guard. They're probably more inclined to killing infantry more than anything else. I'm sure they could take on hundreds of slaves. However, this Doom Wheel is proving a nasty, nasty foe for them. We do have this unit of Iron Drakes unloading their fire load over here on the Rat Ogres. And it does also look we do have some Dragon Slayers as well. This is going to be a perfect matchup for them. Over in one of the breaches, we do have a unit of Dragonback Slayers. They're fighting hard. We have, I love the Bell. The Bell is probably one of my, my favorite units for the Skaven. And I also love the way on the campaign map, you can actually hear it as well. I think that's so goddamn cool. So with the Iron Drake Halberdiers, the Dragonback Slayers are forcing the Skaven back. The Death Runners aren't really standing up against the quality of the Dwarfs. And the Dwarfs are actually throwing up more men, even though they're on their heavy artillery fire right now. They're making their way up. So many cool effects going off here. I, I really do like the effect of these fire arrows. It looks like they should be more impactful than they are though. It feels like they should be like Hellstorm rocket battery, like impactful, whereas this is just like an arrow at the end of the day. The Iron Drake Halberdiers again are fighting. How many of them? There's only, oh, there's actually quite a few of them left. Sorry, for a second I thought there was only like 10 of them in the unit or something. As the fighting does continue. And I mean, mainly it's just the Skaven pouring their men off the siege tower. I mean, look at that. There are so many storm vermin making their way off the walls now. And just a couple brave dwarfs trying their best to hold firm whilst the artillery goes off. I mean, just look in the distance as well as more and more shots come flying in from either side. This is a brutal battle. Something I would love to see uh, from a custom map is maybe like a two-part wall. So like a wall, a big open area, and then another wall. I think that'd be really, really cool. Kind of almost like a little bit like Constantinople, but like a bigger bit in between. 
I think a map like that would be really cool because then you could have like you could have a mini siege battle, then you'd have a like almost like a land battle, and then finally another siege. That'd be really really cool. The rest of escape and yeah, they're using their numbers extremely smartly, just pushing on. Let's go ahead and take a look at this left flank. This left flank seems like the dwarves are committing heavy over here as the Skaven champions are charging him. Yeah, it does look like the dwarves have decided that on this side, this is where they're going to hold their line, which could be a little bit dangerous because if they go ahead and overcommit here, the Skaven could pull around the flanks and do a lot of damage. Oh, wow. This is risky right now. To send this uh, cannon up. Is this a cannon or is this a... Uh, yeah, with a flame cannon. To send this flame cannon around this flank is extremely risky. Hopefully it'll pay off, but it's completely undefended right now. And if any Skaven came up, they could easily overwhelm it. Balance of power wise, we can see that the dwarves are currently not in favor of winning this battle. They have around about 2,100 men, whereas the Skaven have well over 3,000 left. I mean, we have a lot of men as well in this battle to begin with. Over 7,500 soldiers fighting for your entertainment. So if you haven't already, make sure to drop a like. Make sure to drop a comment down below. Let me know that you guys want to see more battles like this in the future. Also, good news if you are interested. I should have my new computer ready and set up. I think in about two weeks' time, everything should arrive. So because of that, we'll be able to play these battles much larger, at a much better scale, uh, without too much, like, on full ultra and stuff like that. It should be a lot of fun. So um, hopefully you guys are looking forward to that, because stuff like that happens. I think my CPU just cannot handle when there's, like, a pure unpartable effect in its face. I mean, my CPU isn't exactly bad, but my new one's going to be an absolute monster, and I can't wait wait to show you guys how how good the game will run i'll, I'll make sure to bench test it maybe as well i mean I, I i still need to upgrade my graphics card i haven't got around to doing that yet so i'm still going to be repping just a, a crappy 970 um however everything else in my computer is going to be really really top notch it's going to definitely bottleneck me uh pretty heavily unfortunately but i'm going to upgrade that probably in the new year and then the pc should be an absolute beast I also spent £200 on a case, uh, which maybe not might, might not be the best uh, financial decisions, but cases are beautiful. Anyway, back to the battle itself. We do have the Thunderers hammering away at this abomination. How's his HP looking? HP is actually looking... Uh, it's, it's dead. It's got donezo Same with these, uh, these Shepard clone ogres as well. The Thunderers and Joseph Bugman has done a great job at silencing these guys with the help of the Thunderers who are just unleashing their brutal volleys of lead to take these guys down bit by bit. And I mean, the right flank looks like it's holding. It's just the center parts right here. As you can see, the Skaven Hordes are just running through the streets of the, this Dwarven city. Some nice spells going off on both sides of the park. How is this artillery doing as well? Go on the entire artillery battery. The great artillery battery of the dwarf. One of the really cool things as well is the amazing modders of the custom map team have managed to get artillery actually on the wall. And that's amazing. Like, I, I, I can't say thank you enough. One to my Discord for making these battles. Also the modding community. They are really, really kind of dedicated. And doing this for completely free. Like, some of the stuff they've made is just absolutely insane. And without them, my channel probably wouldn't be where it is today. Just because of how amazing their maps are makes these battles as exciting as they are and i've actually managed to make it so you can get artillery on the wall itself so you can actually have like like that's that's one of the things as well i know i'm going off on a bit of a tangent but one of the things you know i i kind of watched from the beginning of when warhammer was announced was that warhammer one announcement trailer where we had the dwarfs uh, defending that siege against the orcs and we had the artillery on the wall just opening up on the oncoming dwarves. And that's kind of what I always imagined the sieges to be like. And I was always so disappointed. So the fact that the modders have managed to kind of get that working is really, really cool. If we look at the battle again. We can see the dwarves are trying to kind of form a... Oh, this is going to be a big spell if they're not careful. Oh, thank God that kind of missed a little bit. It was a bit poorly placed, but still a lot of damage going out as more artillery pours into the city itself. Yeah, it does look like the dwarves are going to kind of try and cuddle up here and make their stand. Joseph Bugman is now surrounded. With an ethereal champion as well, trying his best. The Death Globe of Deers are coming in. Where are, the, where are the main forces for the dwarves out of interest? I feel like the dwarves just don't really have a lot left. Um, they have a unit back here, the Peak Gate Guard are back here. 
Uh, we also have a couple units up here trying to wrap around. I mean, maybe if the dwarves can push around heavily, like on this left flank, and then come all the way around the back, kill this artillery, they could have an easy time of it. But I guess the Skaven don't really have a lot left. It just looks like they have a lot left because there's just so many in a unit. Mr. Bugman, really, lots of very, very bloody that day. We do also have Queek as well. He's currently dueling away at a siege engineer who's now fleeing for his life. I mean, the fact that the artillery is up here for the Skaven is going to be devastating to the dwarves. I mean, this is the unit of elders. Yeah, this unit of elders. I wonder why the elders were never put in. Because from what I remember, again, I don't really know a ton about lore. Uh, I know, I, know, I mean, I know a fair about, but a fair amount about the law, but I swear elders were like a, a pretty prominent unit in uh, the Dwarven roster, but I mean, maybe not, maybe I'm completely mistaken, I mean, I, I, the only reason I know that is from the beginning of the end times, I remember the elders had their pistol and then the, a huge two-handed weapon, but I mean, I guess, I guess it, again, it's not like the, Dwar the um, it's not like the, the Skaven have all of their units, like, they're missing like rattling gunners and stuff like that, which are a bit silly, as again, I feel like that's kind of an important unit for them. Another white uh, lightning going off there. The sense of bearers, I haven't really seen too much from them, even though they are normally such a deadly unit. And they're really important when it does come to fighting uh, for the Skaven, because they don't really have a lot of heavy, like, anti-melee infantry, whereas these sense of bearers really fill that role on the battlefield. More artillery coming in, but I love the fact that the dwarves have a fat off artillery battery. Wargrim has come out, and they're actually currently surrounded Creek right now. Oh, all the generals being, you got Skrulk down there being surrounded as well. The dwarves are going to cut the head off the snake. Their front line as well coming in. The Warriors of Dragonfire Pass are duking it out with the Skaven Warriors. We do also have the Ratatiers, though. Okay, it makes me laugh so much moving up. And a lot of these guys are actually going to be routing straight away. Again, apologies for that frame drop. I, I, I don't know why it's like, because it's been fine. And it's just kind of recently it's been sucking. But I mean, you know, in a week's time, we're going to be replacing all the components. So hopefully that shouldn't happen. Nice little flame cannon here. If a flame cannon can take out some of this artillery, that would be good. But I think it's mainly down to the dwarfs winning on this right flank. And they can kind of completely move around here, take out the artillery. Um, and then uh, I'll put the dwarfs in a really good spot. I mean, they don't have a lot of soldiers left. But they have a lot of heroes left. There are only 700 of them left. But again, it's not like a lot of the uh, Skaven have a lot of men left either. They're dropping like flies. And if these heroes can like kill Queek, for example, they're going to be really, really well off. I mean, there's actually only one Royal Guard left in that unit. I thought it was a hero unit almost, but I guess not. Yeah, we need Forgrim to kind of smash away at Queek, and he's actually going to rout him, which is really good. We do have Skrullet moving up a unit of Clam Rats, though. That's going to be helping to pad out this, maybe even save his life. I mean, I see as soon as Forgrim and Joseph Bugman is in here now, looking for revenge. Even though it wasn't the Orcs who burnt his uh, brewery down. It wasn't a scaven, right? But I mean, oh well. Joseph Bugman's just an angry man since he lost his brewery. And now that they've, uh, they've taken down uh, Queek, they're going to be moving on to uh, my main man, Skrillex. <laughs> Hitting them fat beats on the drum and bass. And I feel like the dwarfs have this. I, like, for a long time, I felt like the scaven just was going to easily take this one. Just because they're sheer numbers. But the dwarven shield balls held firm. And the artillery just doesn't seem to have done enough. I mean, it's done a lot in this battle, but I guess it just needs to do a little bit more to kind of push them over the edge. A lot of the kind of the huge creatures just couldn't really suffice in the battle. Yeah, we do have Joseph Bugman now trying to take down the other legendary lords. And do we have any more legendary lords? I don't think we do. We also have who's this? We have uh, the white dwarf as well, making his way up, taking out this artillery. And I think now that if the dwarves can just make their way round, they'll be so well off. Is that unit of PK Guard moving as well? Yeah, the PK Guard are moving in over to this right flank. Yeah, the PK Guard have charged in. Time to get their hammers bloody. Time to smash in some rat skulls here. And I imagine these rats will actually rout fairly quickly. Just because of the sheer amount of like morale debuff they are receiving. I love how we have like abominations as well just scattered around the battlefield where the Dowie have held their line. Very, very cool indeed. Yeah, we're going to start seeing a mass route, I believe. We also have Belagar as well. Probably my favourite dwarf. Fighting away until his untimely demise. 
I also really like how the, the Dwarven like, city has been like, pretty fairly destroyed from this artillery as well. Yeah, there we go. Skrillex. Skrillex has now been rounded. And the rest of the dwarves have got on their artillery line. I think we're just going to see a mass route there by the Skaven. They don't really have a lot left. And how many dwarves survived? 400 brave dwarves managed to survive this. Out of the two and a, what, 3,000 they had in the beginning? Yeah, over 3,500. So, you know, 3,000 dwarves gave their life to defend this fortress. Looking at the kills, we can see that the White Dwarf managed to get 80 kills himself. The PK Guard or PK Hammerers, 80 kills. Very impressive. But the Flame Cannon was really the MVP for that Dwarven army. Looking at the other one, we have Velagar with 100 kills. We have some Quarrelers with Firebolts getting over 100 kills. I really like the animation, as I said, uh, right there. For the last Dwarven army, we do have, uh, again, the peak. The hammer is just 85 kills. They're really, really well done. And then also 400 kills on this Grudfra battery. Oh, was the Grudfra battery actually that many can uh, that many uh, things? Let's have a look. Yeah, no one Oh, a few people did bring Grudge Throwers. But I, I feel like that, that battery was that many. That's really cool. I like that a lot. They must be expensive, though. Uh, looking over at the Skaven forces, we can see that the Death Runners of Steel, the guys who Vanguard deployed, actually almost got 100 kills. And again, it's just the artillery really racking it up uh, for the Skaven. Looking again, the artillery doing a great job uh, along with the Sensor Bearers. You couldn't really get him, but the Death Runners doing okay as well. And then finally, the Doom Wheels uh, got some really valuable kills. And then also the Shadow Clone Ogres as well doing an impressive job. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this battle. If you did, please make sure to drop a like and a comment down below. I really appreciate all the recent support. The channel has definitely been struggling recently, but you guys who like, constantly keep dropping a like and a comment down really does help me out and, and you know, keeps me motivated to keep making these awesome battles, looking for better battles all the time. And there's definitely going to be some really exciting stuff on the channel, so make sure to stick around, subscribe if you haven't already, and fish out.